learning environment. In collaboration with PK-12 teachers, Azusa Educators Association, school reimagination team, which included certificated and classified staff, students, parents, community members, and site and district administrators. The AUSD Distance Learning 2.0 Support for Success instructional plan will launch when we begin school. As a result of Senate Bill 98, which is the Omnibus Education Trailer Bill, the AUSD Distance Learning 2.0 Support for Success will look different from last spring's Distance Learning Plan 1.0. Here are some of the highlights. SB 98 states that we are obligated to provide content aligned to grade level standards that is provided at a level of quality and intellectual challenge substantially equivalent to in-person instruction. Per SB 98, the instructional blocks at both the elementary and secondary levels are designed to include both synchronous using Google Meet and asynchronous instruction. SB 98 stipulates that students must have daily live interactions with teachers and peers, and that will happen through Google Meets. Aligned to SB 98, the schedule includes built-in time and support for emergent bilinguals and students with disabilities, built-in time each week for teachers to collaborate in PLCs, built-in time for student and family connections each day with teachers. Per SB 98 and the new requirements of the Learning Continuity and Attendance Plan, students are required to attend synchronous and asynchronous instructional activities. Teachers will be taking attendance and report student grades in ARIES. Students will receive grades and parents will receive progress reports and report cards. The plan is aligned to SB 98 and the, the Local Control for Accountability Plan goals and the school reimagination team's learning priorities to provide innovative, rigorous, relevant standards aligned instruction that provides equity, including culturally responsive teaching and learning based on positive relationships developed between teachers and students, prioritizes language acquisition of emergent bilinguals, utilizes evidence-based, data-informed, high-leverage strategies, and maximizes student engagement. All of this information we are about to share is located on our webpage at azusa.org. We'd like to begin with an overview of all of our academic offerings. Can you still see my screen? Yes. Ms. Ortega, can you see? Okay, perfect, thank you very much. <clears throat> Here's a chart on our webpage of our academic offerings for next year. We have several programs from which parents can choose. The first program is our instructional, our traditional instructional program. This format is distance learning, otherwise known as remote. Students will have daily participation in virtual distance learning until a return to full in-person daily school attendance. Students still enroll in the School of Residence, <clears throat> and we use district-approved curriculum with a blend of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. New this year, <clears throat> we have the Virtual Academy, which I'll talk about a little bit later. This is also a distance learning or also remote learning program. It's full-time. It's one full school year, also remote. Students are enrolled in their grade level content area classes, again, using board approved curriculum and a blend of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. We continue to have independent study programs such as short term independent study. <clears throat> that's also remote learning. This is a K-12 program for students who might miss five to 20 days due to illness, family emergency or vacation. Students apply at their school of attendance. We use board approved AUSD curriculum and students, again, are provided with grade level standards aligned assignments to be completed independently and submitted to the independent study teacher. We continue to have long-term independent study. That is also a distance or remote learning program. 
same it's k-12 designed to meet a student's specific educational needs interests ability and schedule the students enroll <clears throat> at their school of attendance we use our board approved curriculum and students will check in with an independent study teacher on a regular schedule we also have a homeschool option this will also be a remote or distance learning opportunity in this case the parent is the one that provides the instruction this is requested through our child welfare and attendance office. We use the same, again, district approved curriculum, standards aligned instruction, assignments are submitted to the independent study teacher, and students do check in with the independent study teacher on a regular schedule. And finally, we continue to have our home hospital. This would be remote learning, distance of learning again. And this is for individual uh, students who are unable to attend school due to a medical need. And a parent does request approval from our child welfare and attendance office. All right, I'm gonna go back to the slide. Can you still see my slide? Yes. Okay. All right, just wanted to check. <clears throat> Now I would like to explain our traditional instructional schedule, which we will start in a distance learning format for all grades in preschool through 12 and show you what the schedules look like for all grades. I will begin with our preschool program. Oops. Let me see. There we, go. we are excited to continue to offer our families a robust preschool program. <clears throat> our preschool schedule includes an AM and PM section. On Mondays, all students attend until 11 a.m. On Tuesdays through Fridays, students attend either an a.m. session from 8 to 11 or a p.m. session from 12 to 3. The next slide is for our TK6 schedule. During distance learning for all grades, PK through six, each day you will notice that instruction is scheduled in blocks. Students will participate in a series of instructional blocks that include both synchronous, which is virtual in-person instruction with teachers and peers, and asynchronous independent instruction. During instructional blocks, students are provided with rigorous instructional activities that include a blend of synchronous instruction from the teacher using Google Meet, breakout groups, independent work, and or asynchronous instruction. Although it does not require direct instruction on a Google Meet, the entire instructional block, a minimum expectation of synchronous Google Meet with teachers and peers will be determined. During instructional blocks, students will receive their instruction from the teacher in all of their subjects. For example, teachers will have literacy blocks, math blocks, science, and history and social studies blocks. On Mondays, all TK6 students will begin their day at 8 a.m. and participate in three instructional blocks with two 10-minute breaks during two 10-minute breaks. During the instructional blocks, the teacher will be providing virtual live instruction, and students may participate in paired or group activities and assignments or complete individual activities and assignments. On Mondays, the instructional day ends at 12.05 to enable teachers to participate in professional learning communities with other teachers. However, students will be required to complete homework activities, assignments, and or projects. On Tuesdays through Fridays, the schedule is different. During these days, all students attend instructional blocks between 8.55 and 1.35 with breaks and lunch built in. The instructional block at the beginning and end of each day are for English learners and students with disabilities only, who also attend all the other instructional blocks. Also, on Tuesdays through Fridays, Teachers have student family connections from 2.30 to 3 each day. This is their time to communicate to students and families and or have conferences. Next, we're gonna to go to our secondary schedule. The secondary seven through 12 schedule is also similarly structured. Mondays are shortened days. The main difference is that the instructional blocks become periods, just as the brick and mortar class periods of each day. The expectations for the periods are identical to the elementary instructional blocks. During distance learning, each day, class periods will include both synchronous, virtual in-person instruction with teachers and peers, and asynchronous, 
which is independent instruction. During class periods, students are provided with rigorous instructional activities that include a blend of synchronous instruction from the teacher using Google Meet, breakout groups, independent work, and or asynchronous instruction. Although it does not require direct instruction on a Google Meet for the entire instructional block, a minimum of expectation of synchronous Google Meet with teachers and peers will be determined. Although Monday is an early release day to enable teachers time to participate in professional learning communities with other teachers, students will be required to complete homework activities, assignments, and or projects. Also, on Tuesday through Friday, teachers have student family connections from 2.30 to 3 o'clock each day. This is their time to communicate to students and families and or have conferences. So those are the schedules for our traditional program, which is distance learning until it is determined safe to begin returning to our brick and mortar classrooms. Now I want to talk to you about another option, which is the AUSD Virtual Learning Academy. This is a different option than what I just described. The main difference is that this is a fully year long program, meaning when our schools return to brick and mortar buildings, the AUSD Academy will continue to be online. The AUSD TK-12 Virtual Academy provides students and families with the option to choose a year-long, fully virtual academic schedule. The AUSD Virtual Academy will continue to offer our large range of rigorous courses for students from transitional kindergarten through grade 12. Academic offerings include grade-level core coursework, UC-approved A through G courses, English language development, world language, electives, honors, and AP courses. AUSD is committed to ensuring that rigor, relevance, flexibility, relationships, and social emotional support are essential elements of the Virtual Academy online coursework. This is achieved through high quality, standards aligned content that includes a multimedia rich interactive learning experience. Throughout the learning experience, highly qualified, certificated AUSD teachers will provide instructional support, progress monitoring, and live virtual interaction. The Azusa Virtual Academy is a different program that is intended for a full year program, and we are asking parents who choose this option to commit to one full year. <clears throat> Here is a sample of what some schedules might look like. So for example, a third grade student would take English Language Arts, history, social science, mathematic, science, PE, and then an elective activity. A seventh grade student might take a language arts, history, social science, mathematics, grade seven science, PE, and an elective as well. And then 11th grade might look like it could be a language arts for 11th grade, either a college prep or an advanced placement course. The same thing with US history, integrated math three, perhaps physics, maybe a visual art, and maybe even AP Spanish. <clears throat> in addition, vir virtual academy students are enrolled in their home school and can take part in school activities. Graduating high school students will receive a diploma from their home high school and participate in the graduation ceremony. All courses used district virtual academy students will participate in synchronous and asynchronous interactions with AUSD teachers and students. Just like in all of our programs, students are expected to attend scheduled synchronous meetings and make satisfactory progress in order to meet district and state grade level standards. We had a few questions um, that we had some um, parents ask, uh, and we put this, this was on social media, and we also put it on our FAQs. One of the questions that we had was, would students outside of Azusa be able to enroll in the virtual academy? And the answer to that is yes, as long as the students follow the intra-district intra transfer process from their home district and Azusa Unified. Virtual academy students will also participate in all district and state assessments. There is no cost to attend the Virtual Academy. Students may use personal devices or district-provided Chromebooks. Parents will receive progress reports at the regularly scheduled grade reporting periods. 
And for more information or your questions, uh, you can contact Mr. Paul Hernandez, who is the Director of Alternative Education, by phone or email. And um, we will be putting that in the, in the um, Q&A box for you. And we'll actually, we have that already posted on our, our website as well. Um, we have our registration that is open. If you go to our webpage, there is a registration form. And you can click on that. And you can enroll in this program. So before we take some questions, we have put together um, some questions that parents have been asking on social media. So we want to take a few minutes and um, pose those questions and give you the answers to those. First question is, is, will distance learning classes negatively impact my student's ability to get into college, or will the classes or the grades count the same? All of the distance learning classes and grades hold the same academic weight as in-person courses, and that would be the same for our traditional program in our remote learning or virtual academy as well, any of our courses. Another question is, is will we receive attendance calls if my student does not log into class? Yes. If students do not log in to their Google Meet with their teachers or participate in assignments, teachers will mark them absent just as they would in the brick and mortar classroom. And you will get an automated phone call from our system indicating that your student was absent. Another question is when we, when we are allowed to go back to school, will the distance learning lessons lead into what will be taught when we are back in the classroom? Yes, they will. And that is because all of our courses have uh, curriculum maps. And so we do follow those curriculum maps. And so it will be an, a seamless transition to go um, in, right back into a uh, brick and mortar environment. Next question is, uh, can my students take AP classes? Yes, your student can take AP classes in the virtual academy just as they would in our, uh, on our distance learning courses as well. Another question. Are there fees associated with the virtual academy or is it free? All of our programs are public education and there is no cost to families. Another question. Can I, answer, I already answered this one. If students from another district, can they join the virtual academy? And yes, if they get an inter-district transfer, they can. So now I am going to stop sharing my screen. and turn it back over to our superintendent, Mr. Ortega. So at this point in time, um, our <clears throat> communications, uh, Lika Juarez will uh, assist in um, helping us, those of you that have uh, live questions. Uh, again, we have ample time, uh, but just in case we do run out of time, uh, keep putting your questions in the Q&A and we will keep, um, making sure that we capture those and making sure that we put the answers in our FAQ on the website. Ms. Juarez? All right, first up, we have Christina Gonzalez. Uh, Christina, go ahead and ask your question. Christina, are you there? She is on mute. <clears throat> okay, maybe she does not have a question. We'll move on to the next one. And uh, Christina, if you do have a question, just raise your hand again. Uh, next we have Carmen. Carmen, you are unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. All right, we'll try the next one. Let's go. Kimberly, your mic is unmuted. Do you have a question? Hello? Hi, Kimberly, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi. If we signed our students up for the virtual academy, would we be able to change our mind midway through? Mm 
Would you like me to answer that? Or is oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, you want you want to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. So the the, the technical uh, answer to that is yes. If you sign up for the virtual academy and later on it is not working for you, it's not working for your student, can you move them over and we're already back in school, whether that's a hybrid or 100%, the technical answer is yes. Uh, just keep a couple of, we're just always going to remind all of us to keep a couple of things in mind. Uh, when your student is in the virtual academy, if they move over uh, to the traditional setting, uh, keep in mind that there would be a change of teacher. If they're at the secondary level, possibly a change of uh, schedule, uh, obviously, um, also a change of peers who are in the virtual academy class with them. Um, so just a couple of things to consider uh, when that is happening. And so um, even though you technically can move mm -hmm. over, uh, we are we are urging parents to think about uh, this this particular choice um, for their family. All right, next, Cheryl, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Okay, so um, my question is, for example, I have a senior that, well, an incoming senior. And um, so they're going to be taking classes, you know, that they've never taken before, such as like calculus, statistics, things like that. How mm -hmm. are they going to be able to receive the extra help that they're ultimately going to need for these classes? Like, you know, after their class time, or is there a time set up for, you know, teachers to give the extra tutoring help? How are they gonna get that help? That's a great question, Cheryl. Are you talking about the virtual academy or are you talking about our traditional program, just distance, all of it? Well, um, yeah, for, let's, let's talk, for now, I'm speaking distance learning since we're starting off with that. You know, okay. how is that gonna work? Got it. So yes, to answer that question, um, the, the classroom teachers are available to support students. And so one of the things that we have built into the schedule is that student or is that um, student family connection time, right? And so that that time at the end of the day is for um, teachers to be able to reach out to, uh, to students. Um, students can have conferences with teachers if they need to get some extra help. And what I would say is I would also really encourage um, students that if they're having a uh, you know a hard time or they're struggling they need extra help to reach out to their teachers um, to schedule um, time for um, you know extra help or to be able to um, have a conference to be able to get some additional learning or perhaps even some additional resources to be able to really um, to understand the um, the material but that is a that's a great question and and our teachers um, are, are ready and willing to offer um, you know that support to students because we do realize you know that this is a different environment right so students are going to need lots of support all right next we have Jace Jace your mic is unmuted go ahead and ask your question Jason. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Um, so my, my son is going into third grade and I'm looking to do the virtual academy. I just want to make sure that he's going to have the same teacher and the same uh, students in the classroom for the whole year. Yes, that is, um, with the virtual academy, it will be the same teacher because we have designed it to be a year-long program. So, yes, that is correct. Okay, so it's going to be very similar to the regular traditional program. The only thing different is instead of <clears throat> those students going back into the classroom when they're ready, they're not going to. That's correct. Okay, so the schedule um, for the distance learning will be the same for the virtual academy? That's correct. Well. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have Cheryl. 
Cheryl, go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello? Hi, Cheryl, go ahead. Hi, okay, so I do have another question. Um, for kids or students that are on um, IEPs, um, I know, like, for example, with my child um, who is on an IEP, um, they are able to, they have extra services that are offered to them when they are normally at school. How is this going to work as far as distance learning and those services that are normally offered to them when they're on a school campus? How does that work? Do, uh, do we have, do we have Aaron Kramer on the line? I'm here. I just didn't know if he wanted me to jump in. So hi, I'm Aaron Kramer. I'm the director. I'm the director of special education. So in the distance learning plan, students do receive their IEP services to the extent possible in a virtual platform. So what that means is if they have speech therapy, for example, they would receive teletherapy, so um, speech therapy over the computer. If they have um, occupational therapy, they would get um, services again in a virtual platform. We um, provide services outlined in the IEP to the extent possible um, without being in person. So that would be what would be in the distance learning. I did see some questions in the chat, so I'll address that right now, is that if um, students on an IEP sign up for the virtual academy, the um, services would be virtual for the year. And so again, we cannot um, provide it exactly as it is outlined in the IEP. However, in the spirit of the Senate bill and um, providing a virtual option for the year, we will work with families, again, to provide services outlined to the extent possible. It does not supersede um, the district's offer of a free and appropriate public education, the offer of FAPE. So the offer of FAPE in the regular school setting, the brick and mortar stays in place, but we will work with individual families to discuss the needs of their students and how we are going to best um, align that to a virtual platform if the virtual academy is selected. Okay. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Mr. Espinoza. You can go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello? Hi, Ms. Britt. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I had a question. Uh, my daughter is going to be going into the sixth grade, um, and are they going to be needing any types of books for any of their classes? And if so, are you guys going to have a certain day where they have to go and pick up these books? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a great question. Thank you for that question. Yes, uh, we will have textbooks, and we actually have a uh, meeting next week with our elementary uh, principals who are going to be returning from vacation um, and we're going to be uh, working out a, a, a schedule and a system for that so yes uh, students will be getting uh, books and we will make sure that we have a system where we do that in a very uh, safe um, and socially distant way great question oh. thank you thank you um, I also can I ask another question of course um, are they gonna have any electives or sports gonna be allowed um, is there something that is not going to be offered during these times? Um, right now, um, yes, we are hoping to offer um, some uh, different elective choices and activities. And the teachers, um, they we have art. Uh, we have a program called Meet the Masters. Uh, so that's an example of, uh, of an elective course. Um, unfortunately, uh, right now, um, because of the pandemic and the guidance that we've received from the County Office of Public Health, there are not any um, sports activities that are, that are allowed at this time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next uh, we have Mr. Mendoza Luham. Go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Hello. Hi. So, um, so in regards to so my son my son receives IEP services and I'm going to be completely honest um I had to reach out to the Alliance for Children's Rights in order for him to try to get some services and you know for me it's it's a little frustrating to know that you guys are going to 
I guess, try to meet the, the needs of the children that need these services. And I'm, you know, I'm going to advocate for my son and I'm going to advocate for any other child that needs these services. But I think that the school district really needs to um, take in mind that these IEPs were put in place for a reason. And they are, you know, I guess, you know, like a legal, you know, like, kind of like a legal contract, I would say, you know, I'm not going to lie. In spring, he was only receiving once I finally got the district to or the teacher to kind of get my son the services. And you guys were only giving him 15 minutes a week, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not I mean, for the for me, that's not going to suffice. So I want to know what is it that you guys are going to do to try to implement, you know, the needs of these children. Hi, this is Erin Kramer. Um, so the distance learning block plan, it does um, present some challenges. And you and I have spoken before, and I, and I understand your concerns. You're right, an IEP is a legal document, and we um, hold to that to the best of that we can in these circumstances. It is challenging, um, like we've talked about and that um, we shared in this forum. Um, the IEP, we again, do our best to meet it to the extent possible, but it isn't always necessarily, excuse me, we aren't necessarily able to meet it minute per minute because the day is structured a little bit differently. Um, however, we're working with our staff to meet it again to the, the best extent possible so that students aren't missing their general education blocks in order to be pulled out um, or to um, interrupt their educational um, setting. It, it takes a, a lot of work and a lot of focus. However, we've been planning over the summer and really trying to provide additional supports to our teachers because we're not doing it on the um, drop, like we had to do in an emergency in March. We've had more time to really work on our supports and our trainings for our teachers and um, thinking about how we support parents. So because we've had some time to prepare and some experience, we're really looking for, uh, forward to a smoother transition into the fall. Okay, and let's just hypothetically say that I would like my son to transfer over to the Glendora School District just because of the um, structure, their distant, uh, distant learning structure and the, um, the IEP, you know, services that they're, you know, willing to provide my son. How would I go about that with um, the Azusa Unified School District? So you can, um, oh, and um, Gary Creel's on the line as well, so he may jump in, but um, he would deal with the transfer process. Um, and so Gary, do you wanna to speak to that? Sure. Uh, Inter-district transfers are on the district webpage and you would submit your request for a transfer online and any supporting documentation uh, that would also be uh, submitted online. And then um, we would go from there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Teresa Montes. Teresa, go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Teresa, go ahead. I don't know if you guys can hear me. So, go ahead. We can hear you. Hello? Hi, Teresa. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, um, my question is because um, I'm going to have um, three little ones actually. Well, two of them she's starting this new school year. And um, I have a second grade that will be starting. But my question is if they do the, you know, they're going to start off as a distance learning and me being a working mom and they, they're, you know, the teachers are actually are going to take attendance of all the students. I'm just kind of worried about you know me not being able to help them once you know because I'm not really sure you know I did experience it when this whole pandemic started I did the distance learning with um, two of my children and I was able to you know was I, I, my schedule for my work accommodated with their schedule but I'm not really sure how it's going to look for the new year and then how it, it would be affect them for their attendance. Mm -hmm. Gary, uh, Mr. Creel, do you want to answer that question in terms of options, maybe uh, independent study? Well, uh, Teresa, I don't really, I don't understand mm -hmm. the question. What, what, what are you asking? Well, because I'm a working mom, so if I'm not available to, for them to be there when they have to do their, you know, their class. Oh, I see. 
Okay. Um, yes. So we, we do also have independent study, and that would be the long-term independent study that Dr. Mitchell mentioned earlier. That's designed to be more flexible mm -hmm. that if, for example, a parent in your situation was maybe, um, you know, the, the, the kids were with a family member or something and you weren't around and they just needed more mm -hmm. flexibility in, your, in their schedule, they would be able to, you know, do independent study instead where they would have a more flexible schedule um, and wouldn't have to be in a specific classroom at a specific time. It would be more based on the, the work that was being completed and they would have weekly meetings with a teacher. But independent study is, is independent that, you know, the students are expected to be doing that work on their own. They do have support from um, a teacher, an independent study teacher, but um, it, it's not as um, uh, directed instruction as there would be in the virtual academy or in distance learning. Okay, so since school is going to start in a month, um, are teachers or somebody at the school going to reach out to the parents to let them know, um, you know, what the schedule is going to look like for the student? I mean, like I said, because I'm going to have three little ones. Two are going to be through the district and one is going to be through the state, but it's still going to be at one of the schools with the Zuzu Unified. Say that, say that, I'm so sorry. Say that one more time. I'm having, I'm not understanding what you're asking. Um, I'm having two children start um, with the school, but I'm, I'm want to know since school is going to start in a month, August 20th, mm -hmm. to know is a teacher or whoever my son or daughter are going to have for the school year, mm -hmm. they're going to mm -hmm. reach out and let us know, you know, the yes. schedule, what the yeah. schedule is going to be, how it's going it. to look like. Yep, perfect. Sorry, you were just cutting out on my end just a little bit. So yes, that's a great question. Um, and so uh, just like when we're in brick and mortar, the, um, the principals uh, will send out their, their welcome information and they will explain how that process is going to look. And you're right, this is very different because um, normally, you know, especially in elementary, um, you go maybe, you know, the day before and you go to the office window and see, you know, who your teacher is and the class list. And so in this case, it will, you know, we'll have to communicate that in a different way. So uh, we're still working out the details with that. And we do have a meeting with our principals next week to really coordinate those efforts and ask those questions and come up with some plans to make sure that we're communicating uh, with our families. Um, there's, I also, um, I noticed that there's been uh, some questions in the chat box too around um, just, um, you know, helping parents in terms of um, parent education and workshops. And so we are really working on developing some parent education workshops before school starts. Um, we want to make sure that we partner with parents. Um, we realize that um, this is, you know, this is a new uh, learning environment. And so we want to make sure we provide lots of opportunities to really uh, partner with parents and make sure that we provide opportunities for um, parents to learn um, how to log into the platforms and how best to communicate. And so we have a lot of really um, great plans in the works and we will be communicating that out um, as soon as we have them. So uh, be looking for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next we have Andrew. Andrew, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. So uh, I, I actually have two questions here. Um, I, I noticed is the schedule that was posted for secondary where it's uh, periods one, three, five, one day and two, four, six, another day. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, is there a reason why it was uh, mm -hmm. changed from one, two, three and then four, five, six? It seems like that would be an easier model to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, will mm -hmm. schools have the option to set their periods however they want. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for the question. Yes, yeah, so um, we have been working with the principals in terms of what that kind of what the schedule in terms of the period order might look like um, for uh, the since the the high school principals have um, have been back. They 
um, we had a chance to meet with them and they've been meeting with their staff in terms of looking at, we have programs such as um, early college program and uh, different offerings where we have to coordinate that. So um, in terms of our middle schools, for example, we will definitely um, get that back to our middle school principals and get some input on that to really determine what the best uh, schedule is that really would meet the needs of uh, the master schedule. Thank you for that question. I have a second question real quick too. Um, yeah. Regarding that, the fact that attendance is obviously going to be taken now, um, at, what, at what point are teachers going to be directed to mark a student absent? Mm -hmm. For example, if the student shows up for five minutes in the middle of a class and then leaves or mm -hmm. shows up the last five minutes and says, oh, I slept yeah. in, what will how will teachers be directed to mark that student were they present or were they not present is it 50 percent of the time is it uh, are they just absent or tardy if they don't show up on time yeah, that's a, that is a great question too. Um, Senate Bill 98 talks about attendance being a combination of that synchronous and asynchronous. And so um, I think we need to, you know, definitely get some guidance in terms of, um, you know, the percentages. I'm not sure it says that, but I will definitely look into that and we'll communicate that out. I appreciate that question. It's a good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have Jasmine Ramirez. Jasmine, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I have two questions. Uh, my first question is, I have a TK student coming in and a second grader coming in. And because of their health reasons, they both have asthma. I was wondering if they did the virtual learning academy. I know in previous board meetings that I've watched on YouTube, it said that maybe there was a possibility that TK preschool first grade would have to return to the school. And my second question is, if we still need a Chromebook because now I have two students going in, are those still possible for pickup from the school district? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for the questions. Um, first of all, for all of our programs, um, we are in a distance learning uh, beginning the school year for all grades. And then the second piece is about Chromebooks. I'm really glad that you asked that question as well. And so Chromebooks are still available. Um, we have our um, parent uh, help helpline, which is 8026804. 1970. Um, you can also send an email to our AUSD communications and you can make an appointment to pick up a Chromebook. So we would love to be able to get uh, get you Chromebooks before the start of the school year. Um, and so if you need any, any help with that, please make sure and reach out and let us know. We'll make that appointment for you and then you can come and check out your Chromebook. Okay. Also, and, uh, oh, oh, go I'm ahead. Um, no, go ahead. I also have a question. You said for the Virtual Learning Academy, um, I'm still confused on how you said that they can still take part in school activities. How would that be possible if they're online on a virtual learning program? Is it do maybe they point. see their programs through the computer or how would that work? Sure. That's a great question too. So let's say for example that um, a, um, a high school student, um, or no, let's just say um, any elementary, middle, or high school student is interested in an after-school program at their site. For example, we have um, a mariachi after-school program, um, we have an orchestra after-school program, and so students would, even if they're in the virtual academy, they would still be able to participate in that. So right now, everything is distance learning. So for example, if um, a student in the virtual academy is um, wanting to, take, to participate in an after-school program such as orchestra, that course will also be in a distance learning environment. However, when we eventually open up schools again, when it is safe to do so, let's say that the virtual academy student is still taking their classes um, in that program online, they would be able to participate in an in-person, um, whatever that in-person is for those after-school activities. So um, does that help to answer it a little bit? Yes, um, and do we have to email anybody for if we want to take the virtual learning academy or how do we give them our option of which program we would like to do for our children? Perfect. So um, on our website at azusa.org, if you go to our distance learning uh, page, there and there is an there is a um, 
virtual uh, learning academy page there. And in that, it has a link for registration. All you have to do is click on that link and it will take you to a registration Google form. We've already had some, some families uh, sign up for that. So if you have any difficulties with that at all, um, go ahead and contact us or you can send an email to um, AUSD Communications and we can help you with that. Okay, thank you so much for answering my question. You're welcome, Jasmine, thank you. Thank you. And next we have Karen Rugley. Karen, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Great, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks for all of the information and for the efforts that you guys are putting into all of this. I have a question. I have a son that's going into third grade and he's been in the dual immersion since kinder. Mm -hmm. And then I have a son who is going into the dual immersion in kindergarten this year. Um, they're both native English speakers, and so I'm curious what types of support will be there. I know you mentioned in the distance learning plan specifically that in the morning and afternoon blocks you have some ELD and SPED time. Is that also going to be there for dual immersion students? And my second question related to that is I'm used to the kindergarten schedule with an early bird or late bird, and so I'm wondering if that's also going to be in place for those kindergartners or TKers for this year? That's a really great question. And so um, our dual immersion students do have um, ELD, that is correct. And so um, the teachers will be working in terms of how they're going to schedule that. Um, and so as soon as um, we begin school and you get some information from your teachers, we will be communicating that out. So specifically, I'm not, I'm not quite sure um, how that will work, but we will find out for you and we'll communicate that out. And then your second question um, was around um, the, the early bird, late bird. Is that right? Yep, that's um, correct. Okay. And so, um, so we don't have an early bird, late bird I, at this point built into this schedule. So um, one of the pieces, and, and actually with the flexibility that we have with this learning, um, this, this, the instructional block schedules, is that teachers do have some flexibility to be able to bring the class all together and do some whole group instruction and some mini lessons, but they also have some flexibility in doing some small group instruction as well. And we think that is one of our salient features of this distance learning plan is that teachers will be able to design that. So um, we will have more discussions in terms of how that works um, in terms of, of that. Um, uh, more details will follow, but I, we do appreciate that question because that's definitely a consideration. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And next we have Adrina. You can unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello, how are you doing? Good, thank you. And my question is, I, my son every day is in special ed, and so is my daughter. They're both uh, one's in adult, uh, just, uh, adult positioning. But my youngest, who is in middle school, who's going into the eighth grade, I have concerns about the program he's in now because of the fact of the distant learning thing that's going on. He's not learning to go he's supposed to when he's five. Because I know a lot of these kids need that one-on-one -on -one with the teachers that they're not getting online. So how are you going to substitute that with the computers? When these kids already have such a hard time learning already. Mm -hmm. And thank you for, for asking that. This is Arian Kramer again. Um, you're right, it is, not, it is not the same as being in person, the one-on-one -on -one supports. We do um, work with our instructional aides and our um, special education teams to provide follow-up. So for example, um, when a teacher in a special education class is giving a lesson, the aides will often sit in the lesson so that they're hearing the instruction and then under the teacher's guidance and direction, the aides will then um, check in or work with specific students, especially students who have um, student support assistance um, in their IEPs or get some smaller group time. There will um, be provided different Google Meet um, breakout sessions, if you will, to reinforce the learning, to help with um, some tutoring pieces. And that's one of the pieces aligned to students' IEPs and also just the program within the classroom itself because we try to get those smaller groupings so students have more um, intensive supports. 
So there is going to be more teacher time than there was in the beginning when this first started. So the, it'll be the um, instructional blocks as was um, gone through on the um, distance learning block plan. And we do have the instructional aids and student support assistance available to then do follow up, um, again, under the teacher's guidance with students, either individually or in small group, depending on the needs of um, the students per their IEP or in um, terms of the teacher's um, observation and small group instructional pieces. Mm -hmm. but if it was like it was before that that's not going to work because it's hard to get a hold of these teachers when they actually need to ask some questions or like these kids have issues or having problems with their schoolwork and half of the time they're not really having class with the teachers it's just that here's your work go ahead and do it and when you do have class then we'll figure it out then and that can be very frustrating for these Kids, I see it in my son a lot because he has a hard time with his work. So that's why I'm asking is there going to be more teacher time? Is there actually going to, or should I say, there's actually going to be more of a classroom session than just here, here is your homework that you mm -hmm. need to do. And then we'll have class time and we'll go over that work. Yep. Yes, there, there is more of a focus on that synchronous piece. And so that is the focus of that direct instruction, making sure that there's opportunity for students to connect with teachers and other supports within the classroom. Um, and, you know, if there are concerns, we would really encourage families to bring that up, you know, directly with the teacher. And then, you know, we have administration with the sites to support that. Um, and you can always reach out to my office and I'm happy to talk with you to see what we can do to support the classroom um, in the best way that we can given the circumstances. And I would also like to chime in too. I appreciate that question because um, I noticed also in the, in the chat box, um, uh, we had some parents asking for what, what, is it, what does it really mean, the synchronous and the asynchronous instruction? So I just want to take a minute to kind of talk about that. So in, the, um, in these instructional blocks, um, this is the blend of both synchronous and the asynchronous. And synchronous is what we're doing right now. So synchronous is um, that live, uh, virtual live interaction. And so um, what the, again, the teacher will be giving maybe it's whole group instruction and launching their lesson or they're doing a mini lesson um, that's whole group with all of the students. That's synchronous. Also, um, when, when teachers use breakout groups, um, that in small group instruction, that's also synchronous. Anytime there's any kind of this, just like we're doing now, this uh, live interaction um, is that synchronous opportunity. And so um, we will be doing both. And so, um, for example, when a teacher might be working with a small group of students, um, the other students who are not in that small group will be participating in the asynchronous instruction. And so um, there might be, um, you know, some group activities that they might do. They could do, they could do breakout groups. Um, and it could be paired activities, or there could be some independent work as well. Um, some of our uh, the programs that we have, there are uh, lots of opportunities uh, for students to participate in you know, individualized instruction. So um, I just wanted to, you know, I really appreciate that question because I just wanted um, to make sure and uh, kind of talk about the difference between that synchronous and um, asynchronous as well. Thank you. Okay, next on our list is Lily. And Lily, if you will unmute yourself, you can now ask your question. Uh, hi, my question is regarding the homeschool. Um, now, I was hearing earlier when they were talking about the independent um, study, and they mentioned how for independent study, they meet once a week. Is that the same? for homeschooling? Is that a once a week meetup? I'll take Mr. that Chris, question. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Typically that is a, a once a week meetup because you do have access to a district teacher and then the district teacher um, assists parents who are choosing to homeschool their children with you know assessments and whatever assistance that they might need. Okay, and for that, um, so the, the actual curriculum is provided by the school, like the parents don't have to worry about, you know, creating the curriculum. 
Correct. No. Uh, well, let me just, you are correct. Period. No, you don't have to uh, pay for anything or create lessons or anything like that. You are, you know, creating some of the lessons from the curriculum that you have, but you don't have to go out and purchase anything or, or, or anything like that. Um, it just gives, you know, some parents want the opportunity to, you know, focus on other um, subjects, perhaps, you know, in addition to the school curriculum. And that just would allow you to do that. And um, say if I were to enroll my child in the homeschooling, is that also something that can be changed um, like midway through the year? Or is Absol that? I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can do whatever you choose to do, basically. But as Mr. Ortega said earlier in the presentation, if you do homeschool in the beginning and then uh, transfer uh, your child into the regular program, whether it be at school or virtual academy or, you know, whatever it may be, there may be some differences between where you were, you know, when you were working with your child and where the the classes that the student is transferring into. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you absolutely have the right to, you know, put your child back into school at a, you know, in a different program. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you. Uh, next question we have is from uh, Amber. Amber Fish, you can go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. I apologize. I should have put my hand down. My questions were the same as Karen's regarding the dual immersion. I have a kindergartner starting dual immersion and we're an English speaking family and we want to make sure that we would have the support for our son to to succeed in that program with him not being in a classroom full time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, member. And uh, next we have uh, Christine. Christine, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my question is last year I had a fifth grader that had to use the Chromebook from the school because they were using Hapara. This mm -hmm. year he's going into sixth grade. Will he automatically be set up to go into the Google Classroom and possibly use his own this year? So, um, so Christine, does, does your child still have their Chromebook checked out? He has the school one checked out. His brother was in sixth grade last year and was able to use the home one, but he oh, wasn't okay. because it was on Hapara. So he had to oh, use it, the school one. Oh, I see. We, um, so, are, so would you like to check out another Chromebook? You're welcome to do that. No, I want to make sure that he can use his own and be put on the Google Classroom. Autom do they do it automatically or do we have to register him to be on Google Classroom since he's Got going it. to the sixth grade? I understand. So the Google Classroom uh, platform is set up by each individual teacher. And so the teacher sets up the Google Classroom. It's part of our, um, our Google program. And then the teacher is the one that actually just pushes out that link. And that can be used uh, on really any computing device. Thank okay, so question. he can use his, and we won't find that out till school starts when he gets his teachers and all that, that we can do that, correct? Correct, yes. They will, it, it's just a link that they'll send out. It's very easy to be able to, uh, to just log into that. Okay, and then Thank we'll you. just turn in the, the school one if, he can't, if we don't need it. Yeah, that'd be great. And we will, um, we'll communicate that out to um, uh, where, where and when you'll be able to, to, uh, to actually turn that, check that back in. So thank you for that question. That's a great question. Okay, I have one more question. Now, do we have to re-register them for school this year or any kids that were registered already last year and did the distance learning are automatically coming back? Mr. Creel, can you answer that registration question? Yes, there will be online registration as there was last year. Uh, the window will open, I believe, on July 27th, and you just go into the, uh, you follow the link on the district website, and basically you'll be updating information, you know, if there's like a new address, or new phone numbers, new emergency contacts, all of those sorts of things, and that just up, uh, updates your students' records, and then they're in school. You just re-register them. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you. So once again, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time uh, today. 
thank you so much for all of you that uh, jotted your questions in the Q&A. And so first and foremost, on behalf of the Board of Education, uh, thank you for attending uh, today's meeting, for asking great questions and for partnering with us as we move forward. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting will be repeated tomorrow. Uh, and you can check our website uh, and our Facebook page uh, for the times. Um, and for those of you que hablan español, a las siete y media, en 28 minutos, vamos a tomar esta junta uh, totalmente en español. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, hope to see you soon. Have a good night.